please stand and join us in singing Blessings on the King, number 285 in your hymnal. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
all who see me scoff at me and they mock me. They wag their hands, saying, He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him. Let God rescue him if God loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? Indeed, many Dogs around me, they close in on me, they have pierced my hands, they have pierced my feet, I count all my bones, my God. My God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? They divide my garments for my vesture. They cast their lots. But you be not far from me, hasten to help me, if you love me, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me, why have you forsaken I will proclaim your holy name to my brethren and the holy assembly. I will praise you, say you fear the Lord, join and praise him, all you descendants of Jacob. My God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human kind likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i awesome. 
Christ was obedient unto death, even death on the wood of the cross. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. Please open your missiles to 823C. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you that from this time on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And you behold the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to, to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you just as my father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging twelve tribes of Israel. Simeon, Simeon, behold, Satan has demanded to save you all of y like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail, and once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to them, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I send you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? They replied, he said to them, But now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went as his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. 
and to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front of was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and the temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time, for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around him, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You two are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Surely this man too was with him, for he is also a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to whip, weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders and the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before the, their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, he replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the first king. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon Learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had, and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave, no an gave him no answer. The chief priest and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his shoulders treated him contemptuously, and mocked him, and after clothing him in a pleasant garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, 
You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have found this man have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against them, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us, so no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But altogether they shot it out. Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they had asked. And he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who had mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourself and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that point time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They, not, they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, stared at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him and said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and the darkness came over the whole land until about three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. stand. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their chest. But all of his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, 
had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, also known as Passion Sunday. It is a day of celebration and a day of sorrow. But to those of us, as in the words of the late Paul Harvey, we know the rest of the story. We know that this is not the end. This story is not to end in sorrow, but is to end with great joy. Today starts off with cries of Hosanna, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The people were pla placing palm leaves on the ground along with their cloaks, giving him what we would call the red carpet treatment, praising Jesus as he entered the city. There was another time that the people began to rise up for Jesus. We can read that in St. John's Gospel, that when the people saw the signs he had done, they carried Jesus off to make him king, but he withdrew to the mountain alone. But this time was different. This time he knew that his hour had come. This time he didn't slip away from the people. He makes no protest. In fact, when some of the Pharisees in the crowd ask him to quiet the people, Jesus replies to them, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. Jesus knew what lay ahead of him, and yet he continued on. He knew. He told his disciples why he was going to Jerusalem. He knew that he was, what was going to happen to him. He came to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, knowing that he was to be the new Passover. He knew he was to be the new sacrifice that would free us all. He knew, and yet he continued on out of love for all of us. The people thought they had found a great king who would free them from the Romans. They had seen all the signs that the prophets had foretold, even the sign that the king would be riding in on an ass. They had seen the power he had done through the miracles that he had been doing. He even raised Lazarus from the dead. He must come from God. So they sang, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were right, of course. Jesus did come from God and was God. but. Jesus wasn't the kind of king that they expected. They wanted a warrior king, one who would wave his hand and make the enemy go away. Instead, they got a king who told them to love each other, to love their enemies. And what the heck was this turn the other cheek thing all about? Now we heard Paul describe Jesus today in the second reading. Though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found in human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. What kind of king is that? With today's gospel, we can see how quickly things can change, how fickle we are as a people. At the first sign of trouble, or when things didn't seem to go the way we thought they would, we jumped ship. Soon the crowd who had welcomed Jesus so jubilantly turned against him. Now instead of shouts of Hosanna, they cry out, crucify him, crucify him. Instead of palm leaves and cloaks, they come after him with clubs and swords. For the apostles, this seemed like the end. They couldn't believe what was happening. They did not understand what had to take place. Their lives would never be the same. The one who they had believed in was the Son of Man, was now being tried and sentenced to death, and not just any death. He was to be nailed to a cross, the most gruesome way the Romans could think of to put someone to death. Through all this, Jesus let it happen. He endured all this,
because of the, of the love that he has for each one of us. The disciples couldn't understand this and how this fit into the plan of bringing the kingdom of heaven and the reign of God. Had everything they've done meant nothing? What began as a triumph entry into the city had turned into their worst nightmare. They were sad, broken, living in fear. You see, they didn't know the rest of the story. Today, though, we do. We know the rest of the story. We know that in order to conquer death, Jesus had to die. To complete the new Passover, Jesus had to die. To save us from the sin and to bring to us salvation, yes, Jesus had to die. We also know that his death was not the end. It was a triumphant new beginning. His story was not to end in the grave, but continues through his resurrection. We know that when Jesus said, it is finished, he wasn't talking about his mission. He was talking about his role as a new Paschal Lamb. Jesus' mission didn't end on Calvary. It continues through his rising from the dead and is with, with us each and every day in the sharing of the Eucharist. His life continues as he walks with us each and every day. Now yes, we may feel saddened by the events in today's gospel, but remember, the story doesn't end here on the cross. We are an Easter people, a resurrection people, and because of the cross, we share in Christ's resurrection. May God bless each of us here through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now please stand for our general intercessions. The God who calls us to life, to death, will give us the grace we need to be faithful. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as he leads the church in the solemn rites of this Holy Week, that he may be filled with courage and strength, that the leaders of this world faithfully model self-giving for the good of others, that those who are suffering or dying may see in Jesus the promise of new life. those preparing to receive the Easter sacrament, where they find new life and hope as they gather on retreat this weekend. That each of us continues our Lenten journey of dying to self, confident in Jesus' promise of new life. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the and religious life. For all those listed in our book of intentions, as well as those intentions we hold in the deep in our hearts. Merciful and loving God, you are glorified by those who follow your Son, Jesus Christ, into death and resurrection. Hear these our prayers that we might share eternal life with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask the children to come forward and put their gifts in the baskets up front. And as our gifts are prepared, this evening we invite you to join in your hymnal to number 696, Beautiful Savior. Oh, no. 
My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation of you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for though innocent you suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so if all the angels will praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly give you praise. For if your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of a sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries, for the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat the spread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edith Stein and with all the saints on whose constant intercession your presence will rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, the departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at they passing from this line. Give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on this world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church and graciously. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccatamundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that it should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Eucharist, we invite you to join in your hymnal to number 490, Bread of Life. Oh, uh-huh. 
Let us pray. Nourish with the sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now pray the prayer to St. Michael, dear Angel, Son Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the malice and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and come to say, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, but above God, cross into hell Satan, and all evil spirits who wander through the world, bring of souls. Amen. St. Edith Stein, now please be seated before we be dismissed. Uh, I'd like to invite you to the celebration of the Holy Triduum. Our schedule is online and also in our bulletin. So we'll be going to the spiritual roller coaster Holy Thursday, celebration of Lord's Supper. Jesus Christ had the supper with his disciples. Then Good Friday, Jesus Christ had to suffer, uh, died on the cross. And this is the celebration of the Good Fridays, really, really, uh, you know, it's like a really bottom of the roller coaster. And then Jesus Christ is in a tomb for three days. And on Easter Sunday, uh, we will welcome him as a resurrected Lord. Jesus Christ coming back to life, Easter Sunday. And also, I got a few announcements. Uh, as requested by uh, Bishop Cardinal DiNardo, the second collection today is for the benefit of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. The baskets are in the narthex as you live. Thank you for your generosity. Katie Christian Ministry Food Drive falls on Easter weekend, so the date has been moved to the weekend on 23 and 24. No Saturday or Sunday 6 p.m. Masses next weekend. There is still a need for ministers at Holy Week and Easter Masses. Sign up in our ministry schedule and program app online. And also uh, on the one week on Saturday, week after Easter, which is April 23rd, we'll have a parish gala. And the tickets are on sale. I know that we're coming close to Easter and the Holy Week. And we are starting today the most holy week uh, of our liturgical year. So it would be difficult to, for us to, uh, to do any kind of advertising and selling the tickets. So the tickets you can still buy today in Carmel Hall and also you can get the ticket online. And we, uh, this event uh, it will be a little bit longer because it started at 7, now we'll start at 6.30 p.m. over in beautiful Palacio Maria on Highland North. Please stand for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My Master said, let's go in peace, to love and to serve our God.
Thanks be to God. Thank you very much and have a happy Holy Week.